When you first start Rhino 7 for Mac, you'll have four default viewports. The perspective view can be tumbled with right click and drag. If you hold the shift key and right click and drag, you'll pan, and holding the command key down and right clicking and dragging will zoom in and out. Right click and drag will pan the orthographic viewports of top, front, and right. The command key held down with right click and drag will zoom the same way that it does in perspective. Each viewport has its own name tab. You can double click the name tab to maximize and minimize that viewport. Right clicking a viewport name will show you options for that viewport such as the display mode used in that view or the construction plane also known as the C plane that that viewport will use. If you have a laptop with a trackpad you can also use two fingers to pan and rotate the respective views. Above the viewports are labels to change which maximized viewport you're looking at. You can also return to the four view layout with the icon there. On the left side of the screen is the left sidebar. You can click the icon in the top corner to hide and show the left sidebar. The top of the left sidebar is the command area and as you type here Rhino will show you all commands that begin with the letters you've typed so far. Rhino will also include some guesses at what you might have meant but perhaps mistyped at the bottom of this list. When you press enter to run a command, the command area will also show you instructions as well as options for any command. Below the command area in the left sidebar are object snaps or O snaps. These are qualities of geometry that you can snap to, such as the ends of curves or the center of a circle. If you'd like to snap to the grid or construction plane that you see in the viewport, that is enabled and disabled with grid snap at the top of the screen. Other options at the top of the screen, such as smart track, will be guidelines that work with O snaps, and the gumball option will expose a manipulator object for any selection for moving or creating geometry. On the right side of the screen, we have the right sidebar. You can hide and show the right sidebar with the icon in the top corner. The right sidebar, in contrast to the left, contains panels, either the properties panel, which will be properties for the active viewport or current selection, or inspector panels, which includes a large list accessible through the gear icon to the right side of that docked area. Types of inspector panels include display mode settings, materials, environments, rendering, and more. If you'd like to float a specific panel, you can use the window drop-down menu, floating panels flyout, and this will allow you to float a specific panel that you can put on another monitor or use with sidecar. The toolbar groups that you see with tabs at the top of the screen will change the icons in the left sidebar for some of these, such as curve tools, surface tools, solid tools. If you'd like to float a specific toolbar group, you can use the window drop-down menu, active tool palettes, and float any particular toolbar. To make global changes to Rhino 7 for Mac's preferences, use the Preferences command or Command comma. Any changes that you make here will be seen in each new session of Rhino. Here you could make aliases for shortcuts, change the colors of the user interface, or make changes to display modes for what you prefer. To make changes for the Rhino 3DM document itself, use the File drop-down menu, Settings. Any changes here, such as the units of measurement used, or perhaps the render mesh settings for shaded modes, will be just for this 3DM file. And that's an overview of the Rhino 7 for Mac user interface. Thanks for watching.